every little song. Uh, okay, no, not every. That, yeah, one dips, one dips, one dips. Okay. Yeah, like that. Clink, Okay. All right. Three, two, one. Hey there, my name is Charlotte May and I'm here at Glyph Supply Co. at Triple One Somerset and I'm here to learn all about coffee. I've also been told that I'll be made to brew my very own artisanal pour over coffee and I've never done anything like this before so let's see how I do. So I'm now here with Stoza, a barista at Glyph, and he's going to walk us through the process of making our very own pour-over coffee at home. So now Stoza, I have to admit, I do love my coffee, but I know nothing about <laughs> pour-over. So what's the difference between pour-over, drip coffee, French press? Just give us a quick 101. Okay, so basically for pour-overs, you just need to know two things. First, do not overthink. Second, is to have fun. Okay, All right. well, I'm so, here to have fun, yes. so that's, that's my but, thing done. Yes. <laughs> okay, so the difference between pour over and say French press is pour over, it's, as you see, it's pouring over mm -hmm. the coffee beans and for French press it's immersion. Okay. So basically the, the difference is for immersion, you get a fuller body, more oily texture, okay, more extraction. Mm -hmm. But for pour over, because of the filter paper, the oils are being filtered out, you have more variations to play with it. Oh. Because you're pouring fresh water each pour. Okay. Yeah. Very interesting. Yes. So I say we get down to it. So the most important thing is definitely the beans. All right. Then we have the dripper. For you today, we're using the V60. Okay. A kettle. We're using the EKG for today. And for the grinders, we can have. We both have the electrical one, oat, or the hand grinder. Okay. Awesome. Pretty right. simple. So yes. you can definitely do this at home. Easily. Definitely. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, I will put myself to the test <laughs> first. So if I can do it, you guys can do it too. So yeah. Tell me what is the first thing I should do. Okay. So basically, you need to preheat or pre-wet your equipment. Okay. So basically, you need to first pour water on the V60 and the field of okay, well, This is very interesting. This, like this, it's, it feels like this is a set. This actually not only heats up the water, but actually maintains the temperature. So, because okay. te temperature is very sensitive when it comes to playing with coffee. Okay, it's yeah. very sleek. Yes, so actually I also have a goose neck. Just pour it over, doesn't matter. Okay. Just make sure you just wet everything. Wet everything. So this is an EKG, it actually has a restrictor inside. So it's a good, uh, few, good kettle for beginners. Okay. Because the flow is very stable. So it helps you control yeah, exactly. and be Regardless how you pour. Yes. Ah, so okay. if you want to play with numbers, this is actually giving you 13 grams per second of water. Yes. Wow, so precise. <laughs> okay, so our paper is wet. Yes. What so do you do next? after that, you need to weigh your coffee. Okay. So we, we just need 13 grams today. So you can just pour. Sorry, I'm just going to show camera. Sure. It's a very sexy weighing machine. I feel like I need to get one for my kitchen now. <laughs> so this is a time more <laughs> scale. It actually, actually has, it helps you weigh the weight and also the time. Wow, that's so interesting. Pour. Okay, how much are we going for? Uh, 13, one, three. 13. Yes. Okay. Oh, it smells really good. So what beans are we using today? Today oh. we're using uh, geisha, okay, from Colombia. How precise must I be? Oh, 13.0. It, it has 0.1 right. grams of accuracy. So Ooh. it's yeah, good, very okay. good. Awesome. So, what happens next? So next, actually, we will try, before we try the oat, okay, a lot of actually home brewers, they do not have an electric grinder. Yep. So they usually have something like this, which is the hand grinder. Okay. So I just let you try, put some beans inside, you can grind it. So yeah. it oh, it's heavy. Yeah, so How do I... Oh, oh, oh. there are beans inside already. So, oh, there are beans inside already. Yes. So basically, just turn it around. So ah. actually, yes. Cool. So it's this, like the adult version of sharpening a pencil. Yes. <laughs> yes. This is very, very convenient. So for those who do not have an electric grinder, the hand grinder is a very good choice, especially this one, the Time More uh, Grinder. Okay, wow, it's very nice. Yeah. Very, very sleek, I would yes. say. It doesn't take up much space, right? Okay, so, and this is the Oat Grinder. Yes, correct. So what you do is you turn it on first, you press the bottom, then it starts grinding, you can pour the beans inside. All right. That's then great. you can just off it and take it from the bottom. Okay. There are numbers here. Is yes. that how fine you want the... Exactly, yes. Okay. So it goes from 1 to 11. So now we're using just 3. 3. Okay. okay. So now it's the fun part. So basically just pour the coffee over. Okay. Pour everything. Ah! Oh. Where's... Classic Charlotte new style. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wait, cannot waste, cannot waste. <laughs> Came all the way from where Colombia you said? Yes. Alright. So put it back in. Okay. There. So you take out the V60, the dripper, take it out, pat it to flatten the bit. Alright. 
Nicely done. Put it back down. And you have to tear the weight. Okay. Okay. So now is the pouring part. All right. Okay. So pouring part, we're going to do a four parts pour. So meaning to say we need to pour four times. Okay. And each time you're pouring at different water. Okay. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll teach you, I'll share with you on the way. All right. All right. So basically take up the cat kettle arm. Start the timer, the left button. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Before I start the timer, I'm very yeah. nervous when yeah, okay. it's time. Well, my question is, so it says you're 93 degrees. Yes. Does it have to be a 93 degrees? Nope. You can, it depends on your preference. Actually, okay. we actually brew about 88 to 95. So everyone has their own range. Okay. So it depends on how, how the coffee is, how porous the coffee is, when it's roasted, etc. Okay. But usually 93 is a good start. Okay, so if I don't have this mm. snazzy kettle at home that measures the temperature for me, what can I do? Basically, you can do is just put your normal kettle, let it boil, mm -hmm. and maybe pour to your kettle and let it rest for about 5 minutes. Okay. So I tested, so basically, temperature actually drops 1 degrees per minute. 1 degree per minute. So that's about okay. your range for you. Okay, that's good to know. Yep. Alrighty. So before that, Oh, timer. Time it. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Why are we timing it? Okay, why are we timing <laughs> it is because we need to know when to pour. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it sounds like, especially the first part. Okay, the first part is called the blooming phase. Mm -hmm. So the blooming phase, you actually need to give the, the coffee some time to okay. degas. Ah, okay. Uh, so you need to roughly know when is the next pour. Sometimes pouring too fast and pouring too slow will affect the final. And why is there gas? Because during roasting itself, there's actually a lot of carbon dioxide trapped inside. Mm. So basically, if you your first pour is to let the gas release, so that your future pours allows the water to enter the coffee beans and extract the things out. Wow, it's like science class. <laughs> I love this. Okay, so, so timer this, on. I'll tell you first. Okay, okay, basically it's 13 grams. Okay, you have to pour to 35 grams of water, starting from center, circle up. Make sure you pour and cover all the grounds. Okay, wow. So I need to watch so many things. Do I need to watch the time? Uh, let it go first. Okay, so know. I'm looking for 13 grams of water. Uh, 35 grams oh, of 35 water. Gr oh my gosh, so many numbers. Okay, 35 grams of water from the center out. Yes. Okay, let's go. Okay. Nice. Make sure that everything is wet. Okay. I'm like looking at the grounds and the, and the weight at the same time. <laughs> are we good? Yes, we're good. Same okay. thing, center around 120. 20. Nice. I think you're a natural. Yeah. No, no. You guys can hire me now. <laughs> it smells really good. Yes. So now it's where everything comes out. You can smell the coffee. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right. It's okay. Okay. So basically now, what you're going to do is instead of looking at the time, what I do is I wait for the water to finish. Okay. Then I pour again. Okay. Yeah. So what happens after each pour? Because I know the first one is to remove the carbon dioxide yes. and then the second pour? Okay, so basically there's a lot of acids, there's a lot of sugars, a lot of uh, lightweight and heavier molecules in the coffee. Mm -hmm. So usually the first few pours actually extract the, the lighter coffees, the lighter uh, okay. compounds, lighter molecules of the coffee. So if you like your coffee to be more acidic, you, you pour more waters at the first few stage. Okay. Yeah. And if you don't want it to be too acidic? Do you want to put it less water at the front, more water at the back. Ah, oh, this is so interesting. Yes. Okay. So it is like science. Yeah. yeah. Gosh, I don't know how you guys do it. <laughs> Again. So, even, yes. So pour now this time, pour to 180. 180. Yep. And who came up with these numbers? Huh? Uh, this is... Every barista has a different number. This is my number. So we're making Stoza's coffee <laughs> yes. today. Okay, I get it. <laughs> Stoza's temperature, Stoza's weight. Yes. Okay, 180. After this, I might be out of a job though. <laughs> <laughs> no, your name will be on the menu. People will be like, I want to come for Stoza's <laughs> So, the same thing. Okay, so this is the third pour. Okay. Once it's started down, it's pour again. All right. Okay. And the last pour is basically actually to dilute the coffee. Right. To round it up. Because the first few pours, you're extracting the sugars, the acidities, the acids, the, uh, the cocoa notes and all, the heavier bodies. The last one is to actually to dilute the coffee to expand the flavours. Okay. Yes. So when you're doing this at home and say you don't have a kettle that gives you such precise mm. um, water that comes out of it, you just have to control your kettle very... Try your best to control. Okay. Yeah, if not, just pour in the centre because that's the... Right. Pour in the centre, you, your flow doesn't change. Okay. So that's, that's the most consistent okay. method. Yeah. And is there a reason why we don't stir up the beans to make sure that they're all coated? Uh, okay, there are different ways of uh, brewing. Some mm -hmm. people do stir up the beans. Okay. But personally, I do not do that because if you were teaching people, everyone has different stirring methods. So sure. it's not consistent. Okay. Yeah, so that's why we don't do it over here. So 
interesting. So, Ami, how much trial and error did you have to go through to find this perfect cup? Uh, how much trial and error? It's, I won't say trial and error. Oh, okay. So, I think because over here we, we roast it pretty well. So, no matter what comes out, it's a, it's a decent cup. So, or I'll, I'll put it as instead of saying trial and error, I want to improve each brew. Ah, yeah. So, how do you improve? What are you looking for? So, um, one thing I like is over here, we, we actually the flavor profiles are. Are printed out. So if I brew it and I don't get the flavor profiles that I want, I'll alter it. Maybe it's like, for example, this one is not sweet enough. Okay. I'll pour more in the center and etc. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So do I go one last yes. time? Yes. The last time. This time, same thing. Two, two ten. Two ten. So 120, 180, 210. Yes. Easy. All even numbers. And so it, here at Glyph, you guys roast your own beans as well, yes. am I right? Yep. Oh, oh, oh. So basically, we have two roasters. Uh, one is the S, S9 and one is the S7. Okay. So we roast it on our own. Now, like I told you, I'm not a huge drinker of pulver coffees because I feel very intimidated. I mean, I looked at your menu and you have like seven different types to choose yes. from. So how do I go about making a decision if I'm not familiar with it? Okay. So basically, before asking a barista like what do they have to offer, first you need to ask yourself three things. Are you going for a balanced cup? Do you want a floral cup or you want a more fruity cup? Okay. Okay. Because usually when in different cafes, they usually cater to these three types. So if you want a more balanced cup, it means not too acidic, it's more fuller body, the barista doesn't know what to give. Right. So different, it depends on what you want. Okay. It's like wine. Yes. That I can relate to. <laughs> cool. All right. So are we done now? Yes. We don't have to like squeeze the water no, out? No, no, no. Okay. So basically after that, take it out. And that took us five and a half minutes with all the talking as well. Very fast. <laughs> okay. All right. Then that's our coffee. So basically, you just swirl it, make sure everything is homogenized. I think it smell it. I smell it. Should be a lot of bergamot, like a lot of grape candies, aromatics. It smells like coffee. <laughs> Whenever people say like, oh, floral, fruity, yes. berries, I'm like, okay. <laughs> but it smells delicious. All right, let's try. All right, is there a specific way to pour it? No, 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 no. no. Okay. This is the basic. Lovely. Nice. It almost looks like very thick black tea. Yes. I love the color. So filter is actually the taste profile, the texture is something like tea. Ah, okay. Yeah, so for tea drinkers, filter is a good start to enter into the coffee world. Oh, yes. great. Okay, so, so what's the difference in taste profile between a long black and a filter coffee? Okay, so actually, even the way we roast is different. Okay. So for filter coffee, it's actually light, light, uh, roasted lighter. So you get more of the original taste of the uh, the acidity and the floral notes of the of the coffee itself. Okay. Mm. So you with give that, it let's try. All right. Is there a proper way to? No. Nope. Just, no, just just go for just it. Just drink it. Hmm. Very tea lab, right? Yeah. Yes. You know this reminds me of roasted buckwheat tea. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Right. You get the grapes or so. The grapes acidity. Where are the grapes? <laughs> there are no grapes. <laughs> okay, yeah, there is some acidity, mm. but it's not okay. Usually, when I have black coffee, it's too bitter, too sour for me. Yes. I feel that this is the epitome of a balanced cup. Thank you. That's rude by you. Mm. According to Stoza's recipe. Well, cheers <laughs> to that. Hmm. Mm. Well, I have another Very question well, actually. Mm. Do people ever add milk to their? over coffee? Um, there are people but we highly do recommend them to do that. Okay. Because this is, if you were to add milk, the milk is actually denser than the, tea, the mm. coffee itself. So it actually covers everything. So basically okay. you drink more of the uh, milk than the coffee itself. Sure. So it is a waste to do that. Yeah, because the flavour is actually really, really subtle. Yes. I can actually drink this. <laughs> this is amazing. And another question I have is, price point. I want to ask this for our audience. Why is the price point so different? I know because there's a lot more skill involved, mm. or is there anything else? Okay, uh, another thing is because as compared to an espresso bean, the filter is usually a higher, uh, more, uh, I won't say higher grade, it's, it's, it's a different grade of beans. Okay. Okay, the processing might be different, uh, the complexity is different. So that's why filter coffees is actually more expensive than espresso based. Right, mm. okay. Oh, very interesting. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. I totally see myself doing this at home. That's great. And all you need are, uh, wait, one, two, three, four, four things, essentially. Yes, exactly. 
and just uh, at home you can just use a car. And where can I get all this equipment? You actually can get it here at Glyph, at Triple One Somerset. Right here behind me, very snazzy. Well, I really, really like how your cafe looks. And I have to be honest, I actually do come here quite often. Yes. If you haven't already recognized. Um, but I, I, I do love the space. I, I like how airy it is. And mm. it's nice and light and very modern and clean. Um, and one thing is, I really, really enjoyed the experience today. So yes. thank so, you so much for walking me through it. Thank you. Because I'm always sitting in intimidation, <laughs> watching all the baristas make the pour of a coffee. And I'm very happy to know that we can now make it at home. And if I were to sum it up in one word, I would say it's therapeutic. It's yes. such a therapeutic process. It is. And I'm someone that's super kanchiong, for lack of a better word. I'm always rushing. So this is a very nice moment to take a pause. Yep. You know, we all talk about mindfulness, right? So just take time with your coffee, just five and a half minutes, slowly pour it over four times, <laughs> and, and then you yield a very beautiful cup. Exactly. So thank you so much, Sosa. Thank you. Alright, so if you guys ever want to try this out, come by to Glyph. You can even roast your own beans, get your equipment right here, or just admire the beautiful baristas at work.